of our friends and our brothers and sisters. Great to see you all here today. Also, wonderful joy to see our guest with us today. We're blessed and privileged to have you with us here. Our special uh, family guest, Radovich. Say that right? Close enough, yeah. We have the same kind of thing with a name like Galetta. Most people massacre it on the first try. And Alf and Tammy are here with us again. And a number of others really honor us with the presence. Thank you. Well, if you have your bulletin, you'll notice a number of announcements that are in there for uh, things that are coming up. Exciting time here at Pinyon Bible Church. And remember, a lot of things are put on the calendar. We are excited about that. Mark those down. Plan. Join us on the We had a wonderful time yesterday here at the Ladies' uh, Wow uh, Rooted and Grounded Conference. A couple of us guys got to fit in on some of the session, help out behind the scenes. Wonderful time. Saw some things, learned some things. When Paul was taken up in the third heaven, as he came back, and there were things that could not be uttered. Wasn't, he saw things he was not supposed to talk about. Well, there were things like that that happened at the women's conference. Certain unnamed persons were involved in skits and whatnot that better things left unsaid. But it was a wonderful time, and so grateful for all the that all hard work months planning to make it happen. For all who came, blessed by it, God worked it. Uh, yes, other announcement. Right to our call to so if you stand together. 84th Psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place O Lord of hosts, my soul long yes, fame for the court of the Lord. My heart and flesh sings for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young for all the O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are
Debbie Mayo's father uh, was in hospice. He passed away uh, last night, this morning. Passed away. He was able to get down to before he passed. So that's a, a blessing. Thank you for this. We have been praying for Vern Larson. You know, he went down to Philadelphia for his shoulder replacement surgery. In the recovery room, he had a heart attack. And they discovered some major blockage to the arteries of his heart. Since can take care of that. He's supposed to come back a couple of days ago. But um, because he was taking blood surgery for the shoulder operation, not uh, leading to stop the hope. So they just got back last night from Philadelphia. Everything is well now. He's recovering at home. Bring thanks for our prayers for them. As continue to pray for them during the recovery process. So we thank the Lord. The doctor said of his heart attack, that widow maker kind of attack. Not been in the hospital had it probably. And so, thank you. Those are the requests that we are aware of at this time. Let's quiet our hearts, bow our heads, prepare our hearts to pray. David wrote, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Our Father in heaven, how thankful we are that there's a refuge to which we can run. It says in your word that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. They are saved. We live in difficult days and strange days. We're besought with, with uh, failing bodies, aging bodies. We live in times where it seems a downward spiral has begun in our society. But in all these things, we know that, that you are in charge. You are the great sovereign of the universe. And you offer us a great, a great refuge. As Luther would tell the young Melanchthon, that there's a mighty fortress, that you are a mighty fortress that we can run to. Lord, we thank you for that. You haven't left us here without help. And you bid those who don't know you to come and taste and see just how good, just how good you are. And so like David, we come and we cry out to you, how thankful we are that you hear us. How thankful we are that you, uh, the eyes of the Lord are running or are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. So, Lord, we know that uh, we pray in confidence. As the writer of Hebrews said, that we can come with confidence before your throne of grace to find the grace to help us in times of need. And we do confess our need. We are a sinful people. Within our bodies, within our chests, our deceitful hearts, desperately wicked. So often we can deceive ourselves. But now we thank you that you are a God who forgives and cleanses. You tell us in your word that if we confess our sin, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we come to acknowledge our sinfulness. We come to seek your forgiveness. 
to come to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of all. And we pray, Lord, in this service today that you would remove those distractions, that you would hinder Satan's work, that, Lord, our hearts would be tuned to sing your praise, that they would tune to listen to the message from your word that your messenger will bring to us this morning. And that if there be someone here who's not sure of their eternal destiny, not sure that they are part of your family, that, Lord, that this would be the day that you would hear their cry and they would be adopted in as one of yours. So help us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
We're going to read scripture together. So if you would turn to Romans 10 in your Bibles, I want to read, uh, I'd like us to read verses 5 through verse 17. So Romans 10, if you use one of these Red Pew Bibles, it's page 946. And when you found your place, would you stand? We'll read Romans 10, 5 through 17. <clears throat> All right, we'll begin God's word. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, and that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word. going to dismiss children for Children's Church. Sorry, there, there's nothing exciting up here other than what happened yesterday. So if kids want to be dismissed for Children's Church, I want to tell you about a person I, I met about three months ago. And three months ago, Charlie Emerson and I took a couple of teams up to Word of Life Snow Camp. Not, I'm sorry, sweetie, not today. Come on. <laughs> Breaks the heart. Um, we, we brought six or seven kids up to snow camp. I'll let you know when the seventh one shows up. We might have left them. Um, up to snow camp. And they, eat, they have a snow camp is a Friday evening, Saturday, and Sunday morning event. Well, Saturday evening, they had a rally, and it was done by this person named Paul O'Bradley. They had never heard of. You know, kind of like when I first heard about Leo Galetta. I'm like, that's a strange last name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he shared a message, presentation on how to share the gospel. And when it was done, Charlie Emerson and I looked at each other and we were floored. Not that he brought anything amazing, but the presentation of it, the, the fact that it's, it's so simple. We looked at each other, we're like, nah, he's got to come. He, he's got to come. And, and I'm not trying to put pressure on him, but <laughs> we, I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. And, and so without further ado, because it's not about me, it's not even about him, and he'll say it, it's about Christ. So... This is Mr. Paul Obradovic, and I'm probably saying it wrong, too. Wonderful.
this is this is Leo. This is Leo. Martha, we went to school with their son Bump. So if you know who Bump is, uh, if you don't know who Bump is, um, we do. But we haven't seen him in 25 years. So anyway, so that's free information. Uh, I wanted to say quickly before I get started, thank you, Miss Pat. You you are phenomenal. Your house is phenomenal, and you are such a gracious host. And so thank you for for letting us stay there. That was uh, and for breakfast this morning was was great. It was awesome. And then I think I see uh, other, some other people I know. Alf and Tammy, of course, are here. And but is that Diane back there? Is that Diane? No, no, not Diane. Is that, no? Yeah, okay. All right, I won't point her out. All right, I won't point her out. Hey, listen, we are going to be, uh, we're going to open the Word of God in just a minute. We'll be in Luke chapter 5, but everything that I am going to put as far as Scripture is concerned, for the most part, is going to be on the screen. So if you uh, want to use the Bible, you can use your Bible, but I'm going to put it on the screen as well so you can see it. But I was asked to talk about this topic of how to share your faith. And so we're going to talk about making a connection with Jesus. That's really what this is, making a connection with Jesus. And for most of us, or for many of us, we've already had that connection. We've already made that connection through faith. We read about it just a minute ago. For by grace you're saved, but the Bible says that with the mouth confession is made into salvation. And for many of us here today, we've had that place, we've had that time in our life where we've trusted Christ. We've made a connection with Jesus through faith. We know the only way to get to heaven, the only way to have a relationship with God the Father is through faith in Jesus Christ. It comes as the gracious gift of God. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried, and the most important part, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead, and because he rose from the dead, he defeated sin, and you and I can have a relationship with God the Father. So I want to start off, and I didn't do this at snow camp, but I want to start off by saying this. If that is not your story, if that is not your story, if you do not have that connection with God in that way, I want to challenge you, don't leave here without making sure you know how to have that connection with God. I promise you, Pastor Galetta will stop everything. He will delay his lunch uh, to make sure that you know how, to, how, how you can trust Christ. And if he is not available, I would be, Alf would be, many of the people here, Pastor Mark would be. And so I want to challenge you, if you have never trusted Christ, if you do not have that relationship with Jesus, I want to challenge you to make sure you know how you can make that connection with God. But for many of us, we've made that connection. Jesus said this. I'm going to see if this will work. I'll make sure this is turned on. And then... Well, I'll push the button. Am I doing something wrong, Mark? Help me out. It says on, and it says push this button right here. We're going to play a video game. Ready? I lose. <laughs> there we go. I win. I tried again. I don't know what just happened, because I totally missed it. I totally missed it. What are you doing to me back there? All right, see, I, I told you I have a habit of breaking things. I have a bad habit of breaking things. They're going to fix that, but if you've got your Bibles, you can be here. John chapter 10, verse 10. We'll get it fixed in just a minute. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. For those of you who've made that connection with Jesus Christ, you have this abundant life. You have this abundant life, and you'll know that this life that Jesus Christ gives is real life. It's abundant life. It's the best life life. It's eternal life. Eternal life is the best life you can possibly have. But some of you, most of us, have somebody who has never made this connection with God. They're still searching. Some of them don't even realize what they're searching for. They just know that their life is empty and they're searching for something. And they're searching for the best life. Your friends, your family who do not know Christ as Savior, they may have a good life. They may have a great life, but they don't have the best life. They can possibly have. Without Jesus Christ, we're short of that best life possible because eternal life is the best life possible. And so how can they know? We read it in verse just a minute ago, Romans chapter 10. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall, be, how, the, how shall they hear unless someone preaches? The word preaches there is just the one who proclaims, the one who talks. It's not, it's not you don't have to be a preacher like... Pastor Galetta, and I'm going to open the Word of God. And, right? You don't have to do that, right? You just have to share. It literally is the concept of sharing. And so tonight, this morning, I want to share with you how you can share your faith. How you can share your faith. All right? I'm coming that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Now, I'm going to be very transparent this morning, okay? Very transparent because here's the truth. Um, I came from a church that um, it was probably much like this. It was just a, a whole lot bigger. I had went to a really big church, had about 1,000 people growing up. Uh, that was pretty normal for me. And then I went to Tennessee Temple, which was like 5,000 people, which was insane crazy. And then I was served as a youth pastor of a church of about 800. And so we had probably 100 and 
100 or so youth group, uh, six, 7 through 12 in the youth group. So I'm used to being a big round, around big crowds. But in every one of the churches I went to, the school that I went to, they always had how to share your faith sessions. And every time they'd have a session on how to share your faith, I would get these preconceived ideas in my mind. I know what's about ready to happen. Here's what's going to happen when, when they talk about how to share your faith. Here's what's going to happen. And this was typical for me. I don't know if it's typical here or not, but I'd have a pretty good idea. I am going to find out that I'm going to, they're going to hear this in the session. Here's what I would think. They're going to tell me that it is my responsibility to share the gospel with my friends. And if I don't share the gospel with my friends, then my friends are going to die and go to hell. But they have this presentation that if I'll just memorize, it'll give me the courage to share my faith with somebody. If I could just memorize these six steps or these four things or these five things, I'll, just, I'll have the confidence that I need to share my faith. And so anytime I would go into those kind of sessions, I knew that that was what was coming. And when I would hear that, I would, hear to myself, I would think to myself, all we're doing is playing a game of Jesus said. Well, Jesus said do this, so you go do that. Jesus said do that, so you need to go do that. And so if I was in a session like what I'm about ready to do, I would think, okay, here's what's about ready to happen. They're going to tell me, Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Well, actually, if Jesus would have said it, it would look like this. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, right? That's if Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. They would say to me in this session, they would say, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. It's your responsibility to go share the gospel. God sent you. See, the Bible says God sent you. They would say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I would hear those things, and let me tell you, every one of those things is true. I do not question what Jesus says. I just don't. <laughs> you know, if a guy died and was buried and rose again, and as one of the preachers says it, he predicted it, what was going to happen, I just go with what he says, right? Because if he said it, I I'm just going to go with what Jesus said. He knows, he knows what he's doing. But I would hear these things, but I would hear them. They'd tell me the truth, and I would hear them as an obligation. I would take them as this weight that I had to carry around. Oh, man, the whole world's going to die and go to hell if it's not for me. It's my responsibility. It's my responsibility. I would feel this weight on me like, oh, my goodness, I have to do this. And if they laid it on thick enough in the session, they would, I would probably be guilted into memorizing a presentation so I could share the gospel, so I could just at least do it one or two times to, to appease my youth pastor. And unfortunately, and I don't think churches mean to do this. I, don't, I know youth pastors don't mean to do this. I didn't mean to do this, although I, I'm guilty of it. I think sometimes um, we kind of lay this burden on our people. Like, it's your responsibility now. Go do it. See, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said. But I want to shift for just a minute because while I would hear, and maybe you have heard these verses, and you, you would think, okay, Jesus said it, so I'm commanded to share. Uh, I have this obligation to share. The Bible tells us to share. Jesus' disciples are supposed to share the gospel. All of that is absolutely true. And without cheapening the Great Commission, because like I said, this is what we call it, the Great Commission. I don't, I don't want to belittle anything Jesus said. This is true. Okay? But without cheapening the Great Commission at all, I want us to connect to a better mindset. I want us to shift and stop thinking about the gospel as an obligation, although that's part of it. There is some of that there. I want you to shift from obligation to opportunity. I want you to think about the gospel as you get to share the good news of Jesus Christ, that someone can have a relationship with God, can be free from an eternity in hell, because of the news of Jesus Christ. I want us to shift to a better mindset. While there's no doubt there's an obligation that we all have, I want us to focus on that opportunity. And here's the truth. Many Christians, myself included, many Christians are hesitant to share our faith because I think we look at it as a burden. And when we don't do it, we're guilty. Have you ever felt like that? Man, I should have shared the gospel. Man, I'm such a miserable Christian. I'm such a miserable Christian. I should have done it. No, I want to challenge you to think about it as an opportunity. Now, here's why. Now, by the way, if supposed to and obligation motivates you, awesome. But for most of us, supposed to is, doesn't necessarily connect to our heart, does it? I'm supposed to do a lot of things. I'm supposed to drive the speed limit. <laughs> I have been guilty of driving by grace, not by the law. Right? 
High school students, high school students, uh, elementary students, you're supposed to do your homework, right? But do you always want to do your homework? Help me out, guys. Help me out. No, no, no. I'm supposed to do a lot of things, right? I'm supposed to do a lot of things, but when I'm supposed to do things, I don't necessarily want to do them. But do you know what does connect? Supposed to doesn't guarantee want to, but do you know what does connect to want to? Good news. When you have good news, you want to share it. Let me give you an example. For those of you who are on Facebook, <clears throat> that's the old people now, right? Because <laughs> the young people have abandoned Facebook. But when, you, <clears throat> when you're on Facebook, if a child is born, who posts that a child is born? That's good news. We all do, don't we? Come on now, let's get real serious, grandparents. When, when grandchildren are born... I just, met, I just met you, you grandparents. You, you told me immediately who your grandkids were, right? Why? You know why? Because that's good news, right? Good news. When they were born, that's good news. And when you have good news, you know what you naturally do? You want to talk about it. You don't think, well, I have to go tell someone about my grandkid. I know. <laughs> Eight pounds, six ounces. Born this morning. It, she, no, we don't. When we have good news... We want to share it. Now listen, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he, was, that he died and that he was buried and that he rose again, is good news. Right? You're believing me, right? Because that changes eternity for you. That changes eternity for your family. That changes eternity for your friends. And I'm being told to slow down. <clears throat> you see, when you, have, when you have good news, it's hard not to want to share. When you have good news, you just want to. The message of Jesus Christ, the gospel, if it is good news to you, you will naturally talk about it. So I want you to shift. Mindset shift. First of all, as we start, mindset shift, not mindset shift from obligation to opportunity. We get to share the good news. But this morning was how to share your faith. And if your church, I, I, I hope this isn't the case, but I, again, people don't mean to do these kind of things. We just do them. And again, I'm guilty of doing this. Um, if my church, if it's anything like my church or my youth pastor was, um, you've probably, in a How to Share Your Faith session, probably have been set, sit down and said, okay, if you'll just share the, your, the gospel this way, then it'll be a whole lot easier for you. <clears throat> and so what we do is, is we create these presentations of the gospel. And, and these are all good. What I'm about ready to share, and I'm going to show them to you on the screen, um, all of them. I don't criticize. I'm not, it's not a criticism of any of them. I have used every one of them. Okay, But I want you to think of a different mindset as we go. Some of you <clears throat> may have been told, oh, you're going to share the gospel. Just simply use the Romans Road. How many are familiar with this one? The Romans Road, all right? Romans Road. And you think to yourself, the Romans Road. I can't keep all those scripture verses straight in my head. I mean, come on. Romans 3, no. Romans 3, 20, no. Romans 3, 10. Got to do that one first. Romans 3, 10. Romans 3. I can't keep them straight. And then you ask yourself, why in the middle of the Romans Road is there a U-turn? You know what? You know what I'm talking about if you know the Romans Road. Romans 3, 12, Romans 3, 10. Romans 3, 23. Romans 6, 23. Romans 5, 8. Romans, Romans 10, Romans 10, 9, and 10, right? Right? And then you can why don't they just put them in order? Why can't, and we, and we think, if we'll just memorize the Romans road, then you can share the gospel. And again, I'm not against this. I've used it. They say, okay, you don't like that one. How about this one? Use the wordless book. How many familiar with this? How many familiar with this? And they got all the colors. In, and for some of us, we think, I can keep the color straight, I think. But man, I don't think I want to tell a little kid that red talks about blood. That's a little awkward. Uh, and so, and the blood of Jesus Christ is super important, right? You have to have Jesus' death on the cross, but some of us think, well, I don't like that one. I, we'll just use the four. Anybody familiar with this one? The four, the four spiritual laws. And you think to yourself, I can't even memorize the verses, let alone what all these things mean. And why does a heart divide by a cross, pick, and, that, and this is how you're left, with a question mark, right? I don't know what that's all about. You try to remember that presentation. You think, okay, you don't like that one? Just spell it out on your hand. F-A-I-T-H. We'll give you an acronym. F-A-I-T-H, and you can spell. So it means, and then you can't remember. <laughs> Forgot all. I'll try harder, <laughs> right? Right? I don't, I don't know what it means, right? Faith evangelism. Forsaking all, I'll trust him. No, no. Faith, faith, forgiveness is available. It's impossible. No. And, you, and you, you get confused, right? You're just trying to go through this presentation. And so someone says, well, just use the good news, bad news. And you think to yourself, that sounds like a joke. 
I mean, I got some good, you know, the good news and the bad news, right? But there's truth behind this, but you think, I, this one doesn't fit with me. Either they think, okay, life in six words. We'll come back to this one in just a minute. Another acronym, G-O-S-P-E-L. You spell it out, and you think to yourself, you're talking to your friend who only speaks Portuguese, and you think, ele no fala inglês. G-O-S-P-E-L doesn't make sense to him. How am I going to do that? That doesn't make sense, right? Then you say the rope trick. This is one of my favorites. This is a classic at Word of Life. How many of you have been up to Word of Life? How many of you have ever seen a student do a rope trick? Okay, I'll do it real quick. I, and you think to yourself, I'm going to share the gospel. And the first time I saw this, I thought, I am going to share the gospel that way every time. This represents a really good person. This represents a, really, a so-so person. This represents a really bad person. See, this person has a short list of sins. See that? This person has a so-so list of sins. This is my daughter. No, I'm joking. This is... <laughs> I didn't say which one. All right. And so, and so you, think, you think to yourself, I'll just do this, I'll just do this fancy rope trick. And, and so... I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about the other one. All right? <laughs> and you think to yourself, okay, 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 I'm supposed to take this, and I'm supposed to put this up here, and then, and then I'm supposed to put this here, and then see, we're all, we all have different lists of sins, but Jesus Christ sees us as all the same. And so we're all the same. And you think, ah, oh, if I could just do that, I'll do that. And I thought to myself, I'll do that. See, they're all the same. And this kid's over there is like, what in the world is going on? All right? You see that? See, we're all the same. We all have a list of sins. See, it doesn't, well, watch close, okay? Because it doesn't matter if you are the so-so person, or if you are the good person, or if you are the really bad person, right? Jesus Christ is all the same. And then you get these, and you think to yourself, I can do that. And you're like, okay, here we go. And this is what most college students do. They're like, okay, you do this, he did this, and then he did this, and he did never mind. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love doing this trick. I love to share the gospel this way. But you know what I've been guilty of doing? Oh, I don't have my ropes. I can't share the gospel. What? Come on. Then there was one. This is this is one of my least favorites, although I've used it. Um, is the Evangelic cube? Anybody familiar with the Evangelic cube? Who, he, Tyler, you have the Rubik's cube, don't you? All right. See the Rubik's cube he has there. Imagine a Rubik's. Imagine one a, a box about that big, about twice as three times the size of that, and you carry it around in your pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you open it up and you like share. And you'll see the pictures on here. You can see up here, man and sin to separate, and it tells the whole gospel. It's awesome. And you're like, I can't carry that around in my pocket, so I'll just use the Evangelic card. And they made a card version of it, right? And you think, I don't have my cube, I can't share the gospel, all these are good. And if worse comes to worse, if you can't use any of those presentations, they say, just share your testimony. Just share your testimony. If you'll just share your testimony, and people nowadays, they'll say, yeah, I'm glad that Jesus stuff works for you. You know what the problem is? And again, I'm not, I'm not criticizing any of these, because I'm telling you, I've used every one of them to share the gospel. Every one of them. Okay? But if a particular style doesn't fit with your personality, if you can't quite get the ropes to work, if you don't have your Evangelic cube with you, you know what happens? We muddle through some presentation thinking our presentation is going to save this person. If I could just memorize them, they'll get saved. But I want us to connect to a better mindset. Yes, we have an opportunity. But without cheapening the work of everything that's gone into those, an evangelism explosion, and the one cut cross that Pat was showing us this morning, different ways to share the gospel, they're all awesome. But without cheapening the work of any of those things, I want you to shift from a mindset of a stop having or giving gospel presentations and simply have gospel conversations. You see, a presentation, it, it seems scripted and one-sided. A conversation two ways, and ideas are exchanged. Instead of sitting somebody down, okay, if you'll just listen for just a minute, then you can just you get saved. And, okay, shut up. No, I don't have to answer that question. I'll answer it later. No, no, no. I, listen, let's just have gospel conversations with people. Let's just sit down with somebody and just have normal conversations where we share the truth of God's word. See, a presentation sometimes feels like a sales pitch, but a conversation is honest and genuine. Ideas are shared. So, let's get the right perspective. So, I try to sum it up as best as possible, and then we'll shift into the truth on how to do this, okay? This way, when the gospel is simply an obligation, a have to, okay, then we put our trust in memorization, don't we? To help us share our presentation. That's just the truth. When the gospel is nothing but an obligation, we put our trust in memorization to help us share a presentation. But, if we will just have a conversation... 
and rely on the Holy, part, the Holy Spirit's participation, because he's the only way someone trusts Christ anyway, right? He will lead others to life transformation. So let's get a different mindset. It's not an obligation, although there is some of that there. It's an opportunity. It's, we shouldn't just have presentations, something to memorize, and let me make sure, and let me talk, and, and just let me talk, and I'll share you. And they said, if I just share this, then you'll trust Christ, right? Let's shift to conversations. So how do we do that? So I'm going to share with you some information that's not new. It's not original with me. Uh, Dare to Share is a group out in Colorado we've connected with. Some of us, a lot of this comes from their content. So if you want to look them up online, you're welcome to do that. But what I'm about ready to share is not something to memorize. It's the mindset to get into as you share the truth of Jesus Christ. So how to share your faith. You ready? How to share your faith. <clears throat> now, the first thing, and which a lot of times uh, these presentations that we just talked about leave this out. The first thing that you have to make sure you do right is to begin with prayer. Every gospel conversation must begin with prayer. Now, again, I don't want you to think, oh, okay, I have to do these things, and if I don't do these things, then I've got this wrong. Don't know. But prayer. Even if your prayer is like, dear God, help me, I'm about ready to share the truth, right? <laughs> but I want you to think about prayer. Someone that you want to share the gospel with, how can you pray for them? I want to express this very, very clearly. You will never be an effective witness apart from the Holy Spirit directing you and apart from the Holy Spirit doing His work. You never will. And we talk to God in prayer. So pray before you share your faith. Invite the Holy Spirit to participate in a way that only He can. It is His job to convict. Your presentation will not convict anyone of their need. But do you know what the Holy Spirit's job is? To convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So pray. Begin by praying. Listen, if you have somebody who you desperately want to come to Christ, pray. Here we say it this way. It's real simple. Talk to God about people before you talk to people about God. Talk to God about people before you talk to people about God. And I know you're busy. I know you're busy. I don't have time to pray. I just got to go. I just got to go tell, share the gospel. Well, listen, Jesus modeled for this for us. Luke chapter 5 and verses 15. Let's look at it. We'll see what Jesus did. Jesus modeled all of what I'm about ready to say. However, the report went around concerning him, that's Jesus, all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Anybody question that Jesus was busy? Jesus was busy. Jesus was busy all the time. But you know what Jesus stopped to do? The Bible says in verse 16, so he himself, okay, this is Jesus we're talking about, the Son of God, he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Jesus himself took time to talk to his heavenly Father. Jesus was busy ministering to people, and he made sure to talk to God. So, your friend doesn't know about Jesus? Pray. You want your friend to trust Jesus Christ as Savior? Be sure to pray. You want them to understand the good news? You might be scared? Then pray for boldness. You might think they won't, uh, that you won't say the right thing? Then pray that God will direct your words. You might be afraid that they'll shut you down? Pray for openness. You might think, hey, they're going to ask me some hard biblical question that I can't answer. Okay? Pray for wisdom. Whatever you do, pray. Before you talk to people about God, talk to God about people. Who is it in your mind? Who is it in your family? Who is it in your friend group that needs to hear about Jesus Christ? I'm going to ask you at the end of the service, will you make a commitment to pray <coughs> And you can pray simple things. Pray, 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 obviously, for the person's salvation. Pray that they'll be open to hear the gospel. Pray that, they'll, that you'll have an opportunity to share the gospel. Pray one-sentence prayers if you need to. All right? Maybe you just don't have a time and you're going to share the gospel with them. Or they're there. God, God, dear God, draw David, whoever it is, to yourself. God, please reveal yourself to Ben or whoever your friend is. Right? So what we're going to do this morning quickly, we've asked some of the teenagers to show you what that looks like. Super simple. So teens, come on forward. And I think I've got Addie and Ethan and Joy. Is that right? I remember names. Sweet. All right. But they're going to play different characters this morning. All right. So if you would quickly just watch what they do. And they're going to show you how this might work. All you. Take it away.
I was just thinking about one of the messages. What was it about? Well, it was basically a challenge to tell our friends about Jesus. They gave us this whole plan to help us. And I remember being so excited and so ready to do it. But I'm kind of scared. Yeah, I feel that. Oh, what was the plan they gave you? Well, the first step was to pray for them. Okay, that's easy. Have you done that yet? Not yet, but I was planning on it. Yeah, there's this girl named Erin who I met last semester. She seems cool, but I don't think she's a Christian. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to run upstairs and get some water. Why don't you hit that first step right now? Hey, God. Thanks for camp and for everything you taught me. And thanks for Bobby's friendship. I'm struggling a little bit right now. I know you've given me everything I need to share the gospel with Aaron, but I'm still scared. I'm not even really sure what to ask for, but I do know what I want. I want Aaron to have a relationship with you, so I guess I just ask that you would work in her heart to hear your message and start showing her now how much you love her. Help me not to be scared. Help me to be clear when I talk to her, and help me to be an accurate reflection of you. Thanks, God. In Jesus' name. You can do that. I can do that. It's simple. Your sharing the gospel starts with prayer. So talk to God about people before you talk to people about God. So that's the first step. Again, it's not something to memorize. You don't have to memorize that. You don't have to have a memorized prayer, right? You can constantly be praying for that family member, that grandchild, that one that went away, that, that, that kid that just won't do right. Right? The, the, one that, the one that needs desperately a relationship with Jesus Christ to change his life, to change her life, right? You can do that. You can pray. But the second thing I want to challenge you with is this. Don't just pray, but begin to, <clears throat> excuse me, care. Am I allowed to drink these? All right, just make sure. They weren't like Leo Galetta water or something. Okay. <laughs> you made the joke, not me. <laughs> he said short one. I, <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <clears throat> I love it. I'll let you keep that one. I drank out of that one. <laughs> All right. So there's an old saying. There's an old saying, and most of you know it. Uh, you've heard it before. This old saying is this. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And this is why the gospel cannot be a presentation. It can't be. People don't care about your presentation if they don't think you care about them. They don't care. I remember one time I was doing the rope trick. We actually were doing it in Peru. Uh, yes, in Peru. No, Portugal. We were doing it in Portugal. And uh, we did it, and we did it in front of the person, and the guy goes, nice presentation. He said it in, in Portuguese, but I don't understand. And they said, I said, what did he say? He said it was a good presentation. And that's it. See, my presentation doesn't save anybody. I had no relationship with that guy at all. I just thought, okay, if I just share the gospel with these ropes, he's going to get saved. No. <laughs> Your presentation doesn't save any. One, you can have the best presentation, but if a person thinks this person is more concerned about their presentation than they are about me, they're probably not going to listen to you. It's just the truth that you need to show somebody that you care. Make sure that you care more for the person than you do if you get your presentation right. That's why we have to have just conversations, right? Instead of presentations. So, uh, Jesus modeled this well for us. Jesus didn't just preach and teach, and he did a lot of preaching and did a lot of teaching, but Jesus cared for the people who came near and people that he preached to. So let's look at it. Back to Luke chapter 5. The Bible says this, Luke five seventeen. It says, now it happened on a certain day that he was teaching. We could say that he was presenting. He was sharing something, some truth. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It's interesting. He's not just preaching. He's there. The power of the Lord is there to heal him. Let me just tell you the story. We won't read the whole thing. Luke chapter 5, you probably know. Jesus is teaching. He's preaching in a house. And the, there's so many people gathered inside this house that you cannot get in the door. 
I mean, they're just crowded in, and people are probably peeping through the windows, and probably sitting on the windowsills, and, and they're kind of keeping kids probably crawling underneath people's legs just to see Jesus, okay? Just to get a real picture of this, okay? And in the middle of Jesus' teaching, in the middle of Jesus' preaching, all of a sudden there's noise. There's noise on the roof, which probably wouldn't have been too uncommon because the flat roofs that would have been in that time, at that time period, okay, somebody's up on the roof. They probably just want to hear. Maybe if I can hear through the, through the, through the ceiling or something. But the noise gets greater and greater. And some of you, if you've ever read Luke chapter 5, and if you have not, go home and read it. I challenge you to do that. They begin to tear the roof apart. Now, I really want you homeowners to stop and think about that just for just one moment. Okay? If someone began to tear the roof off of your house, imagine your feelings right then. Okay? Ah! But I'm not supposed to be mad because this is Jesus sitting right here in my house. I'm supposed to be, right? So they tear the roof apart and this guy, these four guys, they drag a friend. He's probably on a cloth or a mat or something and they lower him down. You can imagine the scene. It gets bright and tiles falling. It's like, what in the world's going on up there? And then all of a sudden it gets dark again, you know, and like this shadowy thing comes lower to the floor and they lower him right in front of Jesus. And most of you, you know the story. Jesus looks at the guy, and he says, Dude, you just interrupted my sermon. Did Jesus do that? No. I mean, Jesus could have said, Do you know who I am? But he didn't, did he? He could have said, Come on, man. A couple of you got that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. For those of you who don't get it, politics. Anyway, he should have said, Come on, man. I'm writing a moral presentation here. Right? But he didn't. You know what Jesus did? Jesus stopped his message long enough to care for the man's physical needs. We'll jump down to verse 24. But that you may know. I'm going to get to the message in just a minute. Is basically what Jesus said. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. That's my message. I'll tell you in just a minute. He said to the man who's paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Jesus met a physical need. He could have just stopped and just said, okay, get saved. Trust Christ. Romans, oh, it's not written yet. <laughs> no, he, he didn't. He stopped and met a need. Now, I realize that you can't heal people. I realize I can't heal people. I wish I had that. Okay, a lot of preachers think they can. They can't. Okay, I wish they could. Only God heals. Okay, but you can meet a need. Right? You can let someone know you care. As you pray for your friend, as you pray for that family member, begin to show them that you care. And sometimes, let's just be real, real uncomfortable for just a minute. Sometimes showing that you care is having them into your house, although you do not agree with their lifestyle at all. And that's hard. Sometimes, sometimes showing that you care is difficult, especially for family members. But but meet a need. Include them in your life. Get to know them. Find out what they like. Be kind. Show them that you care. Invite them for a meal. Speak kindly to them. It doesn't mean that you agree with what they're doing, but care. Show that you care. Here's an example. You all ready? Here's an example of what that might look like. Pay attention. No, what happened? Oh man, that's tough. Isn't she the only one who provides for the family? Wow. I want to do something for Aaron's family. I got it. Hi, Aaron. How are you? What's in the bag? Well, I heard about your mom, and it's not much, but it should cover it all for tonight. Oh, no. You really didn't have to do that. I know. I just wanted to help out. I know it's tough having to fill in the gaps at home. Please let me help. Wow. Thank you. Of course. Let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. All right. You could just meet a need by giving dinner to somebody. Giving him something to eat. Hey, you, I heard you had trouble. Hey, I just wanted to provide this for you. Hey, can I watch the kids? Hey, can I bring dinner? Hey, 
Can I, can I just, can I just come sit and you go out and do, can, can I just, can we have a meal together? Can we, can we just go to coffee? Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Can I just come sit and talk? Listen, can you care for somebody? You can do that. So pray. So prayer, first, care. And then third, share. (laughs) This is a session on how to share your faith, so we probably should share the gospel out loud with words. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Right? (laughs) Right? (laughs) We probably should do that. Well, how do we do that? Uh, Because this, this is where we freeze, isn't it? You see, prayer... I can do that. And many times, many times, here's what we're guilty of. We're guilty of, well, I prayed for them. I prayed for them all the time. I pray for them every day. I pray for them every day. I pray for them every day. And then when he comes to sharing the gospel with them, you're cramming a presentation down their throat. You forgot to care for them. You forgot to let them know how much you care. And sometimes there's an opportunity. Just share the truth. Just share the truth. Share the truth. I get that. Okay. But we pray, 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 pray. Let me cram the presentation down your throat. Let's, let's stop and put that care piece in. Let them know you care. Okay. But here's where we freeze. And this is why we shift into presentation mode. This is why we go, okay, if I just come up with a thing and I have to remember and then I can, I can I'll, I'll have it. And then, okay, Romans Road. Romans Road, I'm going back to the Romans Road. And that's my go-to, honestly. That's my go-to. I, I love to use that style when I go. But sometimes we think, I don't even know how to get started. So let me help you get started. I'll move quickly. Then they're going to do one more drama and we'll be done. Here's how you have a gospel conversation. Ready? It's super simple. This isn't hard. Nothing to memorize. But here's how you have a gospel conversation. Ask. Ask good questions. And, and really, this is, this is personal relationship 101. Really. That when you meet somebody new, you ask good questions. You find out a little bit about them. You find out maybe what they like or, or what, what they're, where they go to school or where they work or, 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 or just anything you can about them. Because you know why? Here's the secret. Ready? People love to talk about themselves. <laughs> they do. So just ask questions. And when you ask the question, shut up and listen. I know I'm not supposed to say that. Sorry, Sierra. Uh, just keep your mouth. And then ask another question and find out about them. Let them tell you about them. Ask good questions. Find out a little bit about them. Ask about what they like, what they like doing. And then ask about their faith. Hey, do you go to church anywhere? What's your church church background? Do you have any faith? Do you have any connection with the church at all? Let them talk and let them talk and let them talk. Uh, The Bible tells us something a little bit about this. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, (laughs) slow to speak, slow to wrath. You see, we like to do this. Dear God, I want to tear the gospel of so-and-so. Romans 3.23 says, we're all, you know, Romans 6.23, Romans 6.23, we're, we're spilling. We're almost like we're vomiting stuff up on them. And they're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Where's Romans? I thought that was in Italy. And, and they don't even, right? Because <laughs> honestly, church people don't know church lingo, right? Right? But listen, listen, calm down enough to ask good questions. Find out a little bit about them. And then ask them what their faith background is. We'll show you how to do that in a minute. But did you know Jesus asked about 300 questions in Scripture? I want to challenge you. Ask good questions. Ask good questions and stop long enough to find out a little bit about them. Listen, finding out about them shows them that you care. It shows them that you care about them. And then after you ask, ask good questions, and here's what's going to happen. You ask questions about their faith, and then they're going to throw you a curveball. They're going to say, well, I'm atheist. And then for most church people, are like, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> don't believe in God. Fool, right? <laughs> the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. We start to do that kind of stuff, right? They say, I'm Catholic, and you're like, but I'm going to a Bible church, and I don't know what... Like, we freeze sometimes, right? So I want to challenge you. When you ask good questions, listen to their answers, and admire something about their answer. Let them know you heard them, okay? Let them know that you heard them. Admire. Admire just a little bit. Anything you can. Now, I'm not saying you agree with. I mean, someone says, well, I'm Mormon. Okay, I know you know the Mormon belief is not scripturally based. All right? They think it is. It's not. They are off on a few things. But I don't have to go, well, you're wrong. <laughs> right? I, and, and to be honest with you, I grew up, I thought you were supposed to argue with people. I really did. I had my presentation, and here was the thing. And I, those guys would knock on my doors, and the bicycle guys, and the ties, you know. They'd come knock on my doors. And I'd be I, I just want to argue with them. I just want to argue with them. Like, you don't believe Jesus is God. And I, well, wait, come, boom. Listen, admire something that you can. You're not saying you agree with what they said, but admire something. If someone says, well, I'm a Mormon. Well, you could simply say, say something as simple as, well, listen, I admire their, your dedication to be on mission for a year. That, that man, be on mission for a year. Let them know you heard what they said. 
Someone says, well, I'm an atheist. Well, you could just maybe, maybe comment on the fact that they, you know, hey, I, you, know, you you're, have a strong belief in some science stuff and science has done some good to, for our world. Or you can say something like that. But don't, don't come down on them. Admire something about that. You know the Apostle Paul uh, uh, modeled this for us? In Acts chapter 17, verse 22. Real quickly, this, this is crazy. He's in a place where there's gods, all kinds of actual idols. We don't see a lot of that. He has all kinds of idols. They have so many idols. They literally have an idol and at the bottom or somewhere on it, it says to the unknown God. They had so many idols that they had this idol just in case they missed a God, just in case there was one God they didn't know about, that this was the God we're praying to just in case we miss one. Okay, now, do you think Paul agreed with any of that? No, obviously not. So here's what Paul says. Watch, the Bible tells us. So Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, now watch the, watch the uh, ad- admiration here. I perceive that in all things you are very religious. He just admired something about them, right? He didn't agree with it, but he admired something about it. So I'm going to challenge you when, when somebody shares something, when you ask questions, when you ask questions, admire something about what they have to say, admiring what they say, respecting what they say, giving them a chance to, to talk shows that you care. It doesn't mean you agree, but you can be kind. Here's what I do in my mind when, when I'm doing this. Somebody's talking and sharing with me something. Imagine for a moment that the roles were reversed and that that person was trying to convince you to become an atheist. What response might you have? Imagine if that person was trying to convert you to Mormonism. What response might you have? What would be going through your mind? That's probably what's going through their mind. You got it? So stop for just a minute to admire what they have to say. And then, from admire, this is super simple, admit. Admit that your life was a mess before you trusted Christ. Ask questions. Get to know them. Shows that you care. Admire what you can. And then just say, you know what? I see that you're religious. Thank you for sharing about your thing. My life was a mess before I met Jesus Christ. They've just shared something about their faith. You share it as well. My life was a mess before I, before I met Jesus Christ. Listen, talking about this doesn't promote what they're doing. All right? But it's just basically you're humbling yourself up, humbling yourself, humbling yourself and lifting Jesus up. Admit, admit. But the Bible says this, and Paul says this to us. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul said, I am the worst sinner ever and my life was a mess before I met Jesus Christ. And then Paul would tell his testimony. He got knocked off a donkey and I was blind for three days and he'd tell his story. Listen, admit, admit my life was a mess without Christ. Not something to memorize, but you could simply just say a simple 15-second testimony about your life. You could say something like this. There was a time in my life when I was arrogant and self-righteous. You could put any two words in there you want. I was lost and confused. I was, I was religious and whatever. You could put any two words in there you want. It's not, nothing to memorize. There was a time in my life when I was arrogant and self-righteous. That's my testimony. I had all the scripture memorized. Ooh, I was a, I was a church rat. I mean, I knew it all. I swam in the baptistry. Don't tell anybody. I, there was a time. I just, listen, there was a time where I was self, I was arrogant and self-righteous. And then I met Jesus. Oh, I met Jesus and I put my faith in him. And now I'm forgiven and at peace. You can put any two words in there you want. Just any way you want us to describe it. Now my life is completely different. My life's good. Do you have a story like that? Do you have a story like that? You can say to that person, you, it's just super simple. Listen, man, thank you for sharing Catholic. I don't know much about the Catholics, but I knew they're really religious. They're really devotion. There was a time in my life when I was really religious. If that's your, if that's your story, I was really religious. And I was, I was really self I was really arrogant. And then I met Jesus. You see how simple that was? And now I'm, I'm at peace. I'm at peace. I'm forgiven. Do you have a story like that? Just admire what you can and then admit your life was a mess without Jesus. This will give you the opportunity to share the gospel. And what is the gospel? That Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again. That Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again. And anybody who believes in Jesus can have eternal life. Real quickly, here's what it might look like and then I'll wrap up. Hi. What a guy. Yeah, he wild. 
<laughs> hey, Aaron. I've been meaning to ask you something. Anything, as long as you don't ask me for money. No, <laughs> not that. Um, I was just wanting to ask, like, what was it like growing up in your family? It was definitely something. You know, Mom had a pretty rough life, and with my dad leaving, it just kind of made every day feel super unpredictable. Gotcha. That must have been really hard. How did your mom manage? Did she go to church, or, like, what did she believe? Um, Mom always told us she was Christian, and we went to church every now and then, but not a whole lot. What about you? What do you think of church and Christianity and all that? Well, you know, as a kid, you just go and listen, and you believe what everyone tells you. But as I got older, I really wanted to figure things out for myself, and I realized I just don't really believe a lot of the things in church. That's really good that you set out to form your own opinions. Not enough people do that, but it is super important. Yeah, it was important to me not just to believe something because someone had told me to. That's good. Yeah, I really want to do the same. I'm honestly still learning a lot about what I believe, but when I was introduced to Jesus, he changed my life. Yeah, one of the things that really made me question Christianity was how the Bible says to love people, and a whole lot of Christians I've met are kind of the opposite. I feel that. I'm not perfect at loving people either. Well, you've been a great friend to me, and I know Bobby would say the same. Thanks. I still do mess up a lot, though. One thing that has been really encouraging to me lately, though, is how the Bible teaches that God doesn't expect us to be perfect. In fact, he doesn't even expect us to be good. Oh. Yeah. That's the whole reason Jesus came to die. He knew that there was no way we could ever be good enough, and it is our sin that separates us from him. But that doesn't stop him from wanting to be with us and have a relationship with us. He loves us just the way we are. So Jesus died in our place and then came back to life, and he paid the price for our sin. Right, but once you're a Christian, there's a whole lot of things you have to do and rules you have to follow. Actually, the Bible says that the righteous will live by faith. To become a Christian, all you got to do is believe in Jesus' sacrifice. And after you're a Christian, it's just still about trusting in him, and everyone who believes in him has forgiveness and eternal life. That eternal life starts now. I'm not always the best at explaining this stuff, but I have something that helps. All right, thank you. All right, now I realize that their thing was scripted. I realize that. But that's a conversation. Do you see that? It's just a conversation. And what she did there at the end is she pulled out her phone, and what she was about ready to do is say, listen, I don't always explain this well, but I have something that can help. So real quickly, I'm going to share some, with something that can help. And we're going to take one of the things. Now, by the way, you want to use the Romans Road? Awesome. Just don't make it a presentation. Make sense? Don't cram it down someone's throat. All right? You want to use the wordless book? Awesome. Okay? Just don't like, okay, stop and listen. I'm going to talk. You stop. You listen. Right? No. Okay? We're going to use one. This is a G-O-S-P-E-L. And if you are a techie kind of person and you have an iPhone or an Android, whichever one you want to be, it's super simple. You can download an app. It's called Life in Six Words. And, and this is not a presentation. This is simply something for you to share the gospel with. And I'm going to share with you how to do it. Life in Six Words, you can download the app, and it's, it's there to share, and you can look at it later. You can download it right now and ignore what I'm saying. Either way, you want to do it. All right? But here's what you can do. It's a super simple app, and basically what it does is it shares the gospel in six letters, G-O-S-P-E-L. But here's what I'm going to challenge you how to do it. Literally, you can, you can start, you just push a button, and you just share the gospel. You start pushing the bu button, and you do quick starters, and you just push, 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 you follow. Super simple. You sit down with a friend, and by the way, most of us do this nowadays, don't we? Like we open our phone and like, hey, look at this TikTok video. <laughs> look at this TikTok video. You know what we don't do with TikTok? I, I, everybody know what TikTok is, right? All right, Instagram. Everybody know what Instagram is? How many of you have ever taken your phone and shown somebody something on your phone? Let me help. Okay. Whew. All right, just want to make sure. Okay. So we just, but you know what we don't do with TikTok videos or Instagram videos or whatever it is? You know what we don't do? We don't go. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice here that as he did the dab... His foot came up. No, we don't do that. We just go, what? Hey, hey, what do you think of this? <laughs> and we said, oh, that's pretty cool. And you know what we do? Then we just talk about it, don't we? That's the funniest thing. Hey, send that to me, right? <laughs> right? And we just talk about it. This is an easy way to just talk about the gospel. It's super simple. Literally, and you just push buttons. And you just, like, if I wanted to share the gospel, literally, just, this is how hard it is. Push start. 
<laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, where I'm, I'm gonna sh- and so what you do is it'll bring up these screens, and then literally, if you'll see here, you, down in the corner, you see this Bible right here? You literally push that Bible, and it'll open the Scripture for you. I, look, there it is. And then this verse, of God, see, here's the truth. Here's the gospel in a nutshell. God created us to be with Him, but our sins separate us from God. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds, but paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Everyone who trusts in him has eternal life, and life with Jesus starts now and lasts for eternity. And you know what you can do? You can just sit down. Your video, and sorry, I'm going to sit down. You can just sit down with your friend and just go, hey, dude, I just saw this app. Let me show you. I don't, you know, we, we, we just talked. I just asked. We just admired. We just admitted. I shared that my life was a mess without Jesus. Man, this changed my life. Tell me what you think about this. And you push a button and just walk through it. Hey, God created us to be with him. What, what do you think about that? What do you think? What do you, what's your thoughts on God? And let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk about, I hate God. God's so awful. My grandmother died and then my cousin died at the same day. And he can go off. Of God, yeah, okay. And just let him talk. Let him talk. It might not be the time to share the gospel with him right now. So what do I do? I pray and I put my arm around him and I care for him. God created us to be with him. What do you think about that? What's your thoughts on that? And you share. God created us to be with him. Our sins separate us from God. I told you a minute ago, my life was miserable. I was arrogant and self-righteous. My sin separates me from God. I can't have a relationship with God because of my sin. It's awful. And just talk about sins. What do you think about sin, man? What's sin in your mind? What's, what's this? Just talk. Just talk and share the gospel. And when it comes time to, for them to trust Christ, just offer that invitation. It's, su- it's super super simple but we 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 just have to get over the fear and remember i can't save anyone this can't save anyone it can't you can have the fanciest app you can have the romans road memorized you can do the rope trick but that doesn't save anyone god saves so i'm going to challenge here's my challenge for you pray so here's I'm make, three opportunities of commitment today will you pray for someone. And some of you, you might say, that's it. That's all I can do. I'm not ready for all the rest of that stuff. I, I can pray. That's a win. You have started down the road of sharing the gospel with someone when you open your mouth and invite the Holy Spirit. He, he loves them more than you do. Pray. Maybe today you'll make a commitment. Yeah, I've been praying, but I'm going to start showing somebody that I care. I'm going to shut my mouth long enough <laughs> and stop on my, every time I see them, cramming the gospel down their throat, Right? And I'm going to let them know that I care. They're going to know that I care for them. I might make a meal for them. I might take them out. I might just mow their yard, <laughs> mow their grass, whatever. They're going to know that I care. And for you, that may be the extent that you can go. I, that's, that's about all I can do. I can show someone they care. Let them know you're doing it because Jesus changed your life, of course. Yes, right? Make that connection. But maybe you can say, I can pray and I can care. But some of us, it's, it's ready. It's time. For us to open our mouth and share the gospel out loud with words. But not in presentation style. (laughs) In conversation. Church, we get to share the gospel. Let's go have conversations. So if you could, and I know a lot of churches do this, heads bowed and eyes closed for just a minute. We we bow our heads out of reverence for God, close our eyes out of respect for one another. I'm going to ask you to make a decision. Will you make the decision to pray for your friend that needs to know Jesus Christ? Will you make that decision? You, if you will, just tell God, God, I'm going to start that habit. I'm going to create that pattern in my life of prayer. Question number two, will you do something? Keep your eyes open enough in life to say, this is what they need. I, I will care for that person. Will you make that commitment? Some of you will make that commitment today. I'll care for that person. And finally, here's a big one. I'll make a commitment to open my mouth and share the gospel out loud with words. Will you make that commitment to God? If so, talk to him. Talk to him. You got somebody in mind? You got somebody in mind? Now I'd like to challenge you to pray for that person right now and do it this way. God, help me to be consistent to pray for and then fill in the blank. Super simple prayer. Ready? God, help me to be consistent to pray for and then put their name in the blank. Number two, God, help me to care. Help me to see where they need help and care. God, help me to see where I can meet a need. 
for and then fill their name in the blank. Help God, help me to see where I can meet, meet a need for and fill in the blank. Help them to know that I care. Finally, God, I am scared, but I want them to hear the gospel. Help me to share. It's okay. God, God knows if you're scared, you're scared, okay? God, help me to share the gospel. Help me to have a conversation because I get to share with them the thing that changed my life. God, I pray for everyone in this room. I pray for anybody who's watching. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the fact that he died on the cross, that he was buried and rose from the dead so that we can have eternal life. God, I pray that each one of us will care enough for people that will pray, demonstrate our care, and then open our mouths and share the truth in a conversation so that someone can know just how good you are and they can have eternal life they can have that best life help us to do what we can so that the holy spirit will connect them with you in jesus name amen last thing here we go if the gospel or when the gospel is simply an obligation you'll put your trust in memorization to help you share a presentation but here's what i want you to do conversations rely on the spirit's participation he will lead others to transformation. Got it? Pastor, I'm done. Mark, I'm not sure who's coming. What's that? Worship team is coming.
sovereign in heaven, we, we do come, and I, I think we would all admit that um, in our interactions with people, it has become obvious to us, and as Paul pointed out, people don't, they don't really care what we know until they know we care. So, Father, give us a heart, as Paul said, to see people for their, not according to their flesh, not according to their differences or maybe their annoyances, Lord, or that they are wired way different than we are, God, for their unbelief. Help us not to see people in that light, but to see them for their desperate need, Father, that people need Jesus. And that apart from that, they're in brokenness, Lord, as we once were. <clears throat> and the only remedy for the brokenness, the only way out is the gospel. And as you, by your grace and mercy, send someone, you send someone to intersect our path, Father, with the hope that is only found in Jesus, you call us to do the same. And Father, we have the assurance, Lord, that as, as Paul mentioned, we can't save anyone. We have no power to do that, Lord. That's all according to your grace and your regenerating power and purpose, Father. But you've called us to be the conduit, to be the mouthpiece, Lord. And your promise to us is that one sows and someone else waters, and ultimately you give the increase. And tomorrow, this week, Lord, you have people in our sphere of connection who we can sow. We can sow seeds of hope, seeds of truth. Or maybe we can water what someone else has sown. But, Father, we trust the outcome to you that you will give the increase. So give us a heart, Father. Maybe that's it. We just don't love people the way we should. The greatest commandment says to love you supremely and to love people genuinely. And give us that love, Father. And ultimately, for your glory and for their best. And give us opportunity and boldness and help us to remember to pray, to talk to you about people so that we can talk to people about you because you're worthy of that, Father. Help us to make much of you in these interactions you supply for your glory and for the sake of others. And we thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Um, you're dismissed and uh, uh, prayer tonight at 6. Oh, you, snu you snuck up on me. Yeah, well, I, I didn't see him coming. We just felt we had to get things back in a proper perspective after. No. But uh, thank you, Paul. That was such a blessing. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, Paul will be with us. We have refreshments after afterwards in the lobby. We invite all of our guests to hang around for a little bit and give us a chance to meet you and get to know you better and and give you a chance to meet Paul and his family and Tammy and Alfred here as well and others who are visiting with us. Thank you so much for being here. We do have prayer meeting at 6. We will be praying for those that uh, we know who need the Lord. And we invite you to join us. We meet back here in our little uh, conference room. And we pray for those days when that room is too small. So God bless you. Thank you for coming.